constantly increasing load requirements. This is because of the fast depleting conventional resources. In comparison to the not so fast evolving renewable technology, thus, the need of the art is to come up with a smart, intelligent, energy efficient system sense. If implemented, this would be the first step towards a clean future. Now, coming to the basic law factor of our as you can see, we have four main uh, sources of energy. We have chosen PV, DG, BB, FC, in addition to the DC grid. Now, what is a DC grid? It is power taken from the main AC and rectified. This is collectively called as the DC grid. Now, our main source, our primary source is PV, which is the photovoltaic cell. This is so because it is one of the most developed forms of renewable technology available today. In order to counter the questions of reliability, we have battery backup, which would function depending on the level of discharge. In addition to this, we have two more sources, the DG, which is a diesel generator, and FC, which is a fuel cell. Now here is where we have come across an ethical dilemma. We need to decide between DG and FC. DG, on one hand, it is more cost effective, however, it is a non-renewable resource, hence it is pollution causing and non-environment friendly. On the other hand, FC, even though it is renewable, it is a costlier technology and hence cannot be widely implemented today. Therefore, in order to simplify our model, we have chosen DG. So therefore, at the end of the day, we have four sources in all. We have PV, we have DG, we have BB and we have the normal DC grid. If at all, this system is not able to cater to our load requirements. Our entire analysis is based on the measurement of the levels of current. This is done by detecting the voltage measurements, the changes in voltage, according to which our switching strategy is operated. Indeed, the initial cost of investment is very high. However, given time, with improvements in technology, the cost is bound to come down. And this system can therefore be implemented far and wide, leading to a better greener, healthier, and a more sustainable future. Let's have a goal on our circuit diagram. So this is our circuit diagram where we are using three voltage sources of current, three real step, one arm of resistance, one deck, two optocopter, two MOSFET, and three amplifiers. One arm of real step is always connected in the circuit and it acts as a base this is applied to the current which is continuously supplying the current to the R. This will be there in the circuit throughout the operation. Now, as we increase the load, uh, let's suppose we are switching on the switch and the R2 is coming into the picture. So now R1 and R2 increases the load together. So the voltage shock across R0 will increase. This voltage shock is given to the deck in The deck which has some function which will be uh, explained further in the working. Okay. This step will give an output to octocoupler 1. This octocoupler 1 will amplify the signal, it will amplify basically the voltage level, and it will transfer the signal to the gate, gate of MOSFET 1. This MOSFET 1 turns on, and this uh, the corresponding parabolic branch will start sharing the loop with the main parabolic branch, which, which we can observe through the reading of amplitude. Now, if we further increase the load by switching on this switch and the load is now R1, R2 and R3, then it will further increase the voltage shock across R0. This R0 again will give the voltage shock which will go to the deck. From that, the signal will go to the optocoupler 1 and optocoupler 2. They will again amplify the signal and we will give uh, the signal to the gate of MOSFET 1 and MOSFET 2 respectively. Again, we can see that these all three sources start sharing uh, the load equal. We can observe this by uh, seeing the readings of ambulance, that is ambulance 1, ambulance 2 and ambulance 3. So, by this process we can see that how we are, we are turning on and turning off these switches and sharing the load equally as per our load. Z44 and 3 milliameters of 0 to 200 milliampere rating 
वन डेथ कार्ड एन एस सिक्स टू टू वन एंड दिस इज अवी लॉजिक दिस इज एमीटर विच इज कनेक्टेड अक्रॉस द आर नॉट टू मेजर द करंट एंड दिज आर थ्री रियल स्टेट आर वन आर टू आर थ्री आर वन इज ऑलवेज कनेक्टेड इन द सर्किट एंड आर टू इज एंड आर थ्री आर थ्री आर कनेक्टेड अकॉर्डिंग टू द लोड रिक्वायरमेंट्स नाउ डेक कार्ड इनपुट इज गिवन फ्रॉम द वोल्टेज अक्रॉस द आर नॉट एंड द आउटपुट ऑफ द डेक कार्ड इज गिवन टू द ऑप्टोकॉपलर्स एनोड एंड कथोड पेन्स इनपुट ऑफ द ऑप्टोकॉपलर्स इज गिवन फ्रॉम द आर पी एस ऑफ फिफ्टीन वोल्ट रेटिंग एंड आउटपुट ऑफ द ऑप्टोकॉपलर इज गिवन टू द गेट ऑफ द मॉसफेट एंड द ड्रेन ऑफ द मॉसफेट इज गिवन फ्रॉम द टू आर पी एस ऑफ ट्वेल्व वोल्ट रेटिंग एच एंड बट आर पी एस इज ऑलवेज कनेक्टेड टू द मेन सप्लाई ट्वेल्व वोल्ट when the optocouplers output is high then the gate level will trigger and it will turn on the mosfet and uh, this is our levy logic in the in this 3.42 and 4.5 there are two uh, voltage differences if it is greater than 3.42 then it will turn on the one mosfet if it is greater than 4.5 then it will turn on both mosfets Now, let's look at the working of the demo model. So let's look at the working of our uh, circuit of our demo. So right now, only one of the rear sets is in circuit, which means our highest priority load is currently on. So as per our requirement, only one of the voltage sources is to supply the requisite power. So this this RPS represents our PV model, which is always on. So in this case, as you can see by the ammeter. Only one of the voltage sources is sharing the load. The other two are at zero, which indicates that uh, the load is entirely being supplied only by one source, and the other two sources are inactive, which is as per our logic. So now we'll try and connect uh, an additional load into the circuit apart from our priority loads, and we'll see what happens. So as per our logic, basically a secondary voltage source is supposed to power to give the surplus power. So as can be seen from the ammeters. the share you can see the load load is now being shared equally among two sources each one taking around 120 milliamps each and uh, the net current being 250 milliampere so it's being equally shared so now suppose we turn on all our volts which are available so as per the logic now all three sources should come in the battery the pv cell as well as the fuel cell is supposed to come in and share all the loads equally which you can see is now happening you see each source is approximately sharing about 95 to 100 milliamps of current net current being around 300 milliamps and so uh, we are reducing our dependence on only one source till now what we have seen is it's been made way that we have seen how things shape How by adding or subtracting of loads, how the voltages, voltage sources change accordingly. How does this change happens? But what exactly is the physical significance of the circuits? Here we mean we try to innovate a different system. Ways we can have a distributed generation system, something like uh, photovoltaics. You can have something like fuel cells all together in a particular flow. Here the three different sources represents photovoltaics. And the other load represents the fuel cell, and the other load represents battery bank. Now the three loads uh, will be acting upon based upon our load requirement. Our load requirement may be anything. It may be in terms of like the the voltage across these things are constant, but in terms of current, your load requirement at any any particular time may be one ampere. It may be five amperes. It may be greater than that. Accordingly, our monitoring system. It actually acquires the data and uh, finds out how much exactly is required and what sources to act. With. And according to our logic, we find that first of all the uh, photovoltaics, the power output from the photovoltaics is a free one, and diesel engine fuel cell or uh, the other forms of energy from the EV probably these are all a very expensive thing. And here you have to put in uh, some amount of it. So the base load will be provided. By basically by PV itself, but 
even in the load, we can actually prioritize different types of load. For example, I can take this type of load as my main critical load, where this can't be given a low power quality thing. So these two things, I, I can have this one, I can supply directly from the EV, and the other things I can supply from my DG. On a wider scale, to implement a very a clean amount of energy, very clean amount of energy, we can install the system and diesel generator is incorporated in the system though I may say this is a green energy but diesel, uh, diesel generator is incorporated so as to provide reliability to the system and this is all about the uh, SEMS we are trying to incorporate the same thing in a 120 volt bus system this is a 12 bus system uh, 120 volt system will be incorporating very soon